welcome back to the Arcane Devlocks. So this month my primary focus has been on base building. Uh, when actually implementing that, I ran into a bit of an issue with the lighting system, so I've had to do a complete overhaul of that. And of course, on top of that, I've added a few minor features which I'm about to go over now. So starting off, I've added two new structures, the smelter and the forge. So what these allow the player to do is basically craft up the materials from ores and turn them into weapons and armor and stuff. So this is the forging UI. Uh, as you just saw before, I collected some raw cobalt from the cobalt ore. And if we put this into the main smelting tab of the smelter, uh, we can actually put some fuel in here and it will smelt this down into refined metal. So what I'm using here at the moment is just troll fat. Uh, you'll be able to get this from or trolls and you'll be able to use it as a fuel source. I don't actually have any new interesting entities implemented yet so I haven't done the trolls. I think I'll actually get around to implementing the new entities in a couple of months but before that I'm hoping to do a lot of gameplay work with the magic and combat of the game. This will allow the player to alloy together two different types of refined metal so here we have copper and tin and if that alloys together then we will get bronze. And there we go. So we got one bronze. And with that, eventually there'll be some uh, crafting recipes that involve uh, alloyed ingots. So we have bronze over here. We could probably make some bronze armor or a bronze sword or something along those lines. And that can be done in the next structure over here, which is the forge. So here we have, this is actually just copper, it's not bronze. I haven't implemented uh, any other sort of uh, metals. I've just been doing copper at the moment. And this is just a set of copper lightweight armor. So. If we put some copper in here, it says it requires 10. And if we forge that, then we will get some nice copper leggings. And we go back and let's just make a helmet as well. I actually forgot to show this off in the last devlog, but I've just done a rework of the equipment system. So it's basically just how the um, equipment is rendered onto the player. There's no sort of uh, core changes or big changes that have happened to it. The rework has just allowed me to streamline the process of uh, making equipment that actually renders onto the player a lot better. So as you probably saw before, uh, there's a tooltip now for when you hover over an item. Uh, it's being a bit glitchy in the uh, in both the forge and the smeltery just because I don't actually have it set up so it's just coming over to the side over here which is obviously not ideal. So I'll have to fix it up in a bit but uh, yeah. Uh, it looks pretty nice. Animation for uh, hovering over and uh, going away. I'm pretty proud of that. There's still a few changes I want to make to this tooltip. One of which is when the player holds down shift, I want a little expanded box to show up uh, more details about the item. That way when there's enchantments and stuff on tools, uh, then the player will be able to see what enchantments are on there and just give more detail about the stats of the weapon or tool in general. Okay, so yeah, that is the forge and the smelter in a nutshell. So next up, I actually added a animation for when trees get cut down. So if we come over here and we chop down this tree, as you can see, there's a little bit of camera shake. Uh, I've changed up the particles a bit more for when the uh, player actually hits the tree. And there we go. So that tree has obviously dropped its wood and it's actually applied some damage to the axe, as you can see by this little white bar here. So that of course indicates the durability of the item, so if we chop down more trees, then that durability will slowly diminish. And then when the durability approaches zero, the tool will become a lot less efficient until you actually go and repair it. I think repairing will probably be done in the tool forge. Logically, it makes the most sense because that's where you've actually gone and crafted the tool in the first place. And another little feature I've reworked is actually the interaction system. So as you can see here, this uh, little piece of wood is flashing. If we press F, then it's actually going to get picked up and put into our inventory. So that's done instead of actually having to hover over the item and pick it up. I found that to be a little bit tedious since the uh, item has a small hitbox, so it's pretty hard to actually uh, get on the first go. And then interacting with the various crafting structures is done the same just by pressing F. Okay, so we're in the actual game world now, and I'm going to showcase the building that I've been implementing over the past few days. So we'll just uh, get rid of these trees real quick. Okay. 
Okay, so these trees actually leave stumps. I'm not too sure how I'm going to uh, get rid of them. I think I'll just uh, give the player a shovel so you can dig it up. Or maybe I'll just make them uh, automatically uh, disappear once the tree's actually been cut down. I'm not too sure yet. But anyway, if we go ahead and press B, then we're going to go into the new build mode. So what this will allow the player to do is actually uh, have a hotbar for building. So they can put whatever item they want to build with in there. Um, the hotbar is a bit dodgy at the moment, I've still got to fix it up and make some tweaks, but it's pretty much the bare minimum that works. So if we go ahead and place down some rooms here, these will pretty much be the foundation for actually building. I've actually made a little bit of a tweak to the uh, remaining items in the blueprint UI, it just looks a little bit uh, more simplistic now. And it's just asking for two copper, which is just a, I guess, a test amount. So if we go ahead, uh, I think we already have some copper, yes we do. So if we go ahead and press F, then it's gonna build the room. And if we build these side ones as well, and there we go. So as it stands right now, we don't actually have a way of getting in. Uh, we need to place down a door. We can either do this through the front door, which I just placed there, or we can actually place some side doors in, and this will allow us to basically run in from the side seamlessly and uh, get into the house. But let's just build the front door first. So if we build this, and when we interact with it, it will teleport us into the room. So in the future, I'll actually have an animation for walking into the door, but for now, it's just a quick little teleport. And yeah, while we're in here, we can uh, place down whatever we want. We can place down some structures, so that forge that we just uh, made before, and customize the interior of the base to our liking. So I'll quickly just show off these side doors. Uh, they do the same thing as the front door. They get you into the house, but this one's just a little bit more seamless, and you uh, basically run into it from the side through a actual interactable door. As it stands, this door just automatically opens when you go near it. There's no sort of interaction necessary. But yeah, as we expand on the house a little bit more, I'm going to show you guys some more interior stuff that we can do. So you can also place down floors and walls. So if we do this, and then I'll actually grab the platform. Yep, this one's it. And this platform basically just allows us to jump up through without uh, actually not being able to pass through it, unlike these solid floors here. Oh, and now I'm stuck. <laughs> so yeah, the player can pretty much uh, segment off areas of their houses for separate rooms. And the way we get between each room is with this door. So if we place that down, then it's actually going to build a nice little door for us that we can interact with. And this one isn't automatic, unlike that one down there. I actually have to press F to open and close it. But yeah, that's just a nice little basic door for now. And we can do the same thing on this side. But yeah, that's all I really have for the interior of the house. I still need to add a lot more features in here, so it's actually a lot more interesting. But yeah. Oh, there's also one last thing that we can do with the roof. We can add a tall roof in. But yeah, it's pretty much just going to add a nice little attic space that the player can actually wander around in. So if we place some platforms up here, then here we go. We have a nice little attic. But in the way of exterior decoration, I've still got a long way to go, but I just have some uh, basic little additions that you can make to the base. So with this sort of pillar, you can just place it around anywhere on the sides or just through the middle, whatever you want to do. And this is pretty much just a decorative stone pillar that will make the edges look a lot nicer. Another thing we can do is we have some nice little outside windows. If we build these, then it's actually going to allow us to look into the house. And lastly, there's just a nice little roof window that we can add to these uh, roofs up here. And I can't actually reach this to build it, but uh, that's definitely an issue that I'm going to have to uh, solve somehow. I think I'll just do that in the form of scaffolding so the player can uh, just build scaffolding up the house so they can actually build it or maybe some sort of climbing feature or just roping i'm just really not too sure but yeah that's pretty much the building uh, i'm just gonna go over one last thing real quickly which is the short roof yeah that just serves as a cosmetic purpose it doesn't actually add any physical space to your base i've still got a long way to go until base building is finally finished and polished off but i've pretty much implemented most of the core mechanics for it and last but not least i had to do a rework of the lighting system just to accommodate for the uh, effect of this sort of interior darkness and ultimately it's just handled a uh, lot better now so if we actually change the time to night i believe in the 600s tonight yeah there we go not too sure if there's much of a difference from the old lighting system but you can actually place more than one torch at a time now without having artifacts everywhere and in general it's a lot more efficient now and easier to work with 
But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for this month's Devil. If you want to see some more frequent status reports, then you can join my Discord and I post them every now and then. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.